Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nakadalo at nanonood sa ating broadcast ngayong umaga. Ako po si Luis Bienvenido N. Foronda, ang guro ng palatuntunan sa araw na ito. Ito po ang unang serye ng mga panayang pangkasaysayan ng DLSU Departamento ng Kasaysayan at ng Sociedad de Historia. Ito po ay inyong mapapanood sa FB page ng De La Salle University Department of History. Mag-like and share po kayo. Mulit-muli, ang DLSU Departamento ng Kasaysayan kasama ng Sociedad de Historia ay itinataguyod ang gawain nito. Pandayan, the DLSU History Department Students Lecture Series na nagtatampok ng tatlong panayam mula sa mga estudyante undergraduate at graduate ng departamento. Ito po ang una sa mga seri ng panayam na ating matutunghayan ngayong umagang ito. Simulan po natin ang ating programa sa mamagitan ng isang panalangin. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts. 
forever. forever. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Makasaysayang araw po sa inyong lahat. Pinabati ko po mga kababayan, ang mga nanonood, at lahat ng dumalo sa unang serye ng panayam, pangkasaysayan, na inihahandog ng DLSU Departamento ng Kasaysayan at ng Sociedad de Historia. Para sa pambungad na pananalita at pagpapakilala ng tagapanayam, nais ko pong ipakilala si Dr. Arlie Ross D. De La Cruz, ang pangalawang tagapangulo ng Departamento ng Kasaysayan. Sir Arlie? Thank you, Luis. Dr. Maria Florina Aurelio Swan, Chair of the History Department, faculty members of the History Department, our dear students, and to those who are watching and joining us today in the DLSU History Department Facebook page, good morning. We would like to welcome, welcome everyone to this first ever online lecture series of the department entitled Pandayan, the DLSU History Department Student Lecture Series. This three-part webinar organized by the History Department in cooperation with Sociedad de Historia will feature outstanding historical researches of our students in the history program, both from the undergraduate and graduate levels. For this term, we have one undergraduate research and two graduate researches that will be presented during this entire uh, webinar series. We, the faculty members of the department, are honored and thankful to our student speakers for accepting our invitation for them to present and share their research to the public. We're also proud to say that the research presentations in this webinar prove that our students in the history program can conduct extensive research and can produce highly relevant and exceptional studies that help fill the gaps in and enrich the study of Philippine history. I hope that our students who are watching us today, this morning, we we'll learn a lot from this presentation and will be inspired to also do research and write about our history. Maraming salamat po. Uh, for the second part of my task, ako po ngayon ang magpapakilala ng ating, mga tagapag, ng ating tagapagsalita ngayong umagang ito. Our speaker is one of my former students in the AB History Program, finished his Bachelor of Science in Business Management and Bachelor of Arts in History, honorable mention, in February of this year at DLSU Manila. He was given the best thesis award by the history department for his undergraduate research entitled A History of Blacksmithing in Kawit Cavite, 1898 to 1985. He was also a recipient of the Gawad Lasaliano Award. To present his study entitled A History of Blacksmithing in Kawit Cavite, 1898 to 1985, let us all welcome today's speaker, Mr. Andrew Nicole Miranda. Uh, thank you very much for the warm welcome, uh, the LSU Department of History. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen for. Kikita na po ba yung screen? Opo. Yes, Drew, okay. we can see you. So, uh, yeah, let's start na po. Uh, so, medyo na po zoom out. There, okay. Uh, so, uh, good morning to you all. So, this thesis ko na to is uh, presented to the Faculty of History Department uh, last August, uh, last year pa. So, it's uh, one year anniversary na din. It's entitled, A History of Blacksmithing in Kawit Cavite from 1898 to 1985. So, yeah, let's proceed. Uh, this is the chapter outline. And uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, first is introduction, and followed by early blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite, and then the uh, third chapter is blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite from 1898 to 1950, um, and then contemporary blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite from 1900 
from 1950 to 1985. And then lastly is uh, the summary and conclusion. For the introduction, for the chapter one. Uh, for the chapter, uh, for the background of the study, our country possesses a rich cultural heritage of metalworking. And the person doing this kind of craft is called blacksmith. And uh, they are also called uh, pandai or magbabakal in local terms. Uh, blacksmiths use iron or steel, which differ them from other craftsmen like goldsmiths, silversmiths, and tinsmiths. Uh, the knowledge of blacksmithing uh, in the Philippines can also be said to have originated from numerous foreign contacts, mostly came from the south, uh, the, the famous of which was known as uh, the Malay Forge. And then, as you can see in the picture here, uh, there is this uh, double piston uh, bellows, kung saan dito, uh, in, parang ginagamit siya alternately para magbuga ng hangin, para magbigay ng hangin dun sa pugon para lumakas yung apoy para sa pagpapanday. So afterwards, uh, encounters with metals were mostly regarded as products of trade. For my statement of the problem, uh, I have four questions to answer, which also reflects my four objectives as well. First is, how did the early blacksmithing practices begin in Kawit Cavite? Second, how was the blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite during 1898 until 1950? Third, how was the blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite during 1950 until 1985? And lastly, what uh, is the overall impact of blacksmithing in the local economy and in the local heritage? For the significance of the study, there is no comprehensive study on blacksmithing in Kawit Cavite done yet by any Cavite historians today. So this study is the first attempt to do so. Notwithstanding the scarcity of sources, uh, this paper is expected to offer a great uh, significance in the field of local history, cultural heritage, and community-based industries. For the scope and limitations, uh, the study focuses on the year 1898 when the first recorded blacksmith shop named H.B. Blacksmith in Kaingen, Kawit, Cavite was established uh, by Buenaventura Jimenez. Up until the year 1985, because uh, it is the year when the ownership of the business uh, changed together with Benedicto Valles Jr., uh, the present master blacksmith of the shop. So until now, siya pa rin yung uh, pinakapanday ng shop na yun. And this study, as an economic history, is part of the local history of Cavite, specifically the town of Kawit. Um, it documents the traditions of blacksmiths with regard to tools, methods, and products, as well as their beliefs. Um, their roles in the society, especially during the revolution, and how this industry contributed to the economic and social cultural heritage of the town. So, for my uh, conceptual framework, uh, taken as a whole, uh, this uh, illustration a blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite is being viewed as an essential community based industry local heritage, and in indigenous knowledge system uh, that contributes to the overall economic history of Kawit by analyzing how the industry affected the local economy of the province in terms of its production and also in terms of income distribution. Let's move on to the second chapter. Uh, chapter two, early blacksmithing industry in Kawit Cavite. Prior to the Spanish occupation, uh, Kawit was populated by the natives, organized themselves into communities under a single chieftain, uh, as cited by Dr. Lars Obaldo on his book, uh, Sayo Salazar has defined specialists in the old Filipino Austronesian community, uh, which includes the Datu, specializing in politics, the Panday, specializing in technology, and the Bailan uh, in religion. So the attached specialist or the blacksmiths working under the local chief patronage were provided with raw materials needed uh, for their uh, production. So um, in this kind of economic setup, the blacksmith only contributed uh, their skill to manufacture 
uh, products and let the cheap supplies, the raw materials needed, uh, such as iron and coal. And as a seasonal craft, uh, blacksmith also participated in the local economy by managing their own farmlands, animals, and uh, another source of income during the dry season. So, uh, kasi pag uh, harvesting season, medyo matumal yung uh, bintahan ng mga blacksmith products kasi ginagamit na yung mga products nila. Well, the, during the dry season or the planting season, ito yung pinaka-peak ng demand kasi maraming may demand for ganong products. Kasi mostly nung uh, demand is for agricultural, fishing, and also for household. Uh, next, uh, so in a blacksmith shop, uh, a division of labor exists, and blacksmith, blacksmiths have their own roles and tasks in forging process. So ang pinaka head uh, is the maestro, the head blacksmith. Uh, he is the one who forged the metal and oversees all the work. Uh, the maestro is the one tasked to shape the heated metal into its desired shape. And uh, his uh, apprentices or assistants are called mahadores. So the mahador uh, is tasked to assist the master blacksmith in heating the metal and hammering it on the anvil. And uh, another assistant is also assigned uh, to make and fix the wooden handle for the blade. Well, the one, well, the other person is also in charge of polishing the overall product. So uh, here are the uh, products, uh, what do you call it? Uh, equipment, tools and equipment. So the first is the pugon or kiln. Uh, this serves as the area where the metal is being heated. Uh, and then it's followed by the whetstone or hasaan. It is used to sharpen the forged metals. Next one is the anvil here, as you can see on the picture, or palihan, a piece of cylindrical iron inserted in a heavy wooden base. And next one is, uh, are the tongs or sipit used to hold the hot metal while being forged. Uh, there are also a set of hammers in intended for flattening the heated metal and forming it into the desired shape. Uh, these are maso, yung big hammer, uh, to quickly flatten the metal. And also there's this masito or small met, small hammer for soft hitting. And then just an ordinary metal also for uh, alternative of maso used by the other person. Um, then next. For the, um, before the forging process uh, begin, uh, usually, the, ta the blacksmith uh, prefer or the, uh, all the materials, such as uh, coal and base metal. And in order to uh, start the production, uh, the coal is often bought in the market or self-produced by burning woods in the backyard. And then the base metal is often acquired from junk shops and surplus from vehicles like jeepneys and trains. So in order to start the production, a blacksmith must also know uh, the kind of product he will be doing. He should know the size, the accurate shape, and design. So for the overall process of the blacksmith, of blacksmithing, here is the here is the illustration I made. For the forging, first uh, he will do the forging. So the scrap metal is cut into its desired shape, and then it is heated and flattened. It will then undergo to shaping. So the base metal is heated in the furnace and uh, forged for further platining. And then it will go to smoothening. So the texture of the blade is smoothened through the grinding process using abrasive wheels. And then it will undergo the heat treatment wherein the blade is heated in the desired temperature and soaked in a type of liquid required for the steel. So uh, uulitin siyang ilagay sa pugon, tapos papainitin, tapos ilalagay, isosoak siya sa... Uh, mixture ng water para tumiba yung steel. And then after that, uh, papa tulisin na siya. So the cutting edge of the blade is sharpened through the grinding process uh, again. And then after that, uh, most of the or all of the existing blacksmith shops here in Kawit Cavite uh, practice trademark stamping. So the shop emblem is being engraved on one side uh, of the blade. Like for example, uh, the N blacksmith, uh, there is a letter N 
uh, embedded on the steel para palatandaan yun, which I will be explained later. And also after that, uh, dito na yung i-attach yung, uh, yung uh, steel sa handle niya, wooden handle. So the wooden handle is attached to the blade by heating the elongated end part of the blade and attaching it to the handle while it's hot. And then after that, the last stage uh, process is uh, polishing, which uh, the blade is uh, softly being rectified and polished using a clean cloth. So uh, the next uh, slide is uh, here. Uh, I compiled uh, some of the uh, usual or uh, products being uh, sold here in Kawit Cavite. So marami siya, around uh, more than 100 then yung list. Tapos, ito lang yung mga some of them. So mostly of this are used for agricultural means like pang-ani, yan, machete, tambakol, itak carmona. Tapos yung iba naman, ginagamit din sa household. Yung iba pang tabas ng damo, ganyan. So the overall uh, indigenous knowledge system on blacksmithing in Kawit Cavite is perceived to be influenced uh, by three different phases. First one, the trade contacts between numerous foreign traders, particularly the Chinese, uh, provided an avenue to transfer the technological expertise of the metalworking to the early settlers of the town. So this would be modified later on with the blacksmithing courses um, from the trade schools during the American occupation, and then later on be modified by the mechanized process in 1985. Let's move on to the early history of blacksmithing in Kawit Cavite. So uh, a, popular, a popular folklore story about the derivation of the name Cavite clearly establishes uh, the fact that there were blacksmiths existing be uh, before Spanish rule. So the story began with the wandering Spaniard um, who was lost and tried to seek help from a blacksmith. So uh, una niya nakita may isang panday. So nagtanong siya who at that time was busy making a kalawit or a hook used for fishing. And then the Spaniard then asked the blacksmith about the name of the place in Spanish, uh, in Spanish language. So yung panday naman, unable to speak the language, so thought that the man was asking he uh, what he was doing. So the blacksmith uh, replied and said, kalawit. So yun yung nasabi lang niya. And then the Spaniard misheard it and thought it was kawit, as you can see on the slide. And then it uh, it was in the course of time, the word kawit evolved into kawit with an E, and then uh, finally Cavite. So as, as you can see on the map, uh, the geographical uh, shape of the province is like a hook shape. So kawit, uh, kalawit. And then there were also tools ranging from small knives to elaborately forged weapons uh, recovered in South Luzon that proves the presence of iron implements in the geographical area. Another claim uh, also rested on the proximity of Cavite to Manila. The town being just kilometers away from Manila could perhaps rely most of their industry with the early people of Manila. So as provided here, uh, Quote, uh, the large and elaborately furnished house compound of uh, Manila chief Ra Suleiman uh, included not only the living quarters but also attached metallurgical uh, workshops focused on large scale production of bronze and iron artillery. So Manila has a uh, huge um, blacksmith shops, uh, mostly uh, uh, tinatago sa likod ng bahay ng chieftains yung mga uh, products. And then Kawit uh, was, has become one of the entrepots of trade with foreign countries like the pre-colonial um, giant, trade giant China. And then the Chinese didn't only uh, trade with the natives in Kawit, but also uh, most of them um, left China and stayed in Kawit for good. So this movement instigated the transfer of uh, Chinese knowledge on metalworks 
particularly blacksmithing to the natives of uh, the town. So as you can see uh, on some quotations from Morga, uh, he said, uh, it is true that colony, the Philippines cannot exist with the Chinese as they are workers of all trades and businesses. And they are very industrious and work for small wages. And then according to the census of the Philippine islands, and the Chinamen were the first carpenters, blacksmiths, sculptors, and painters employed in the Philippines. So aside from uh, the Chinese, other notable blacksmiths who resided in Kawit were Japanese and also Indians. And then uh, with this kind of uh, migration, um, more demand for blacksmith works emerges, especially with the creation of Cavite Shipyard and Cavite Puerto. More demands for blacksmiths were created. As you can see on the picture, uh, this is the Cavite Shipyard. And by 1630, uh, it is one of the largest areas of employment for both Spaniards and the natives, with almost 1,000 individuals working at the site when a galleon was under construction. And uh, in Cavite Navy Yard, uh, there were talleres or shops. Some of these are related to or uh, specific for blacksmithing like the Talier de Herreria, Talier de Pondicion, uh, or foundry shops, Talier de Herreros de Rivera, and then across an open space uh, just along the beach, uh, there was a building known as the Real Herreria or uh, the Royal Ironworks. The structure was where these talleres were located. Coal and iron were delivered to the foundry from a delivery site located along the beach. This was where most of the blacksmiths worked for long working hours and endured strict working conditions. So yes, uh, the blacksmiths of that time uh, were also subjected to uh, Spanish polo servicios. And then as you can see here, uh, the overwork and impoverishment were taken to their work at 3 a.m. And then mag stop sila ng 11 a.m. for lunch break, 11 a.m. to 1. And then they will continue work 1 p.m. until 10 p.m. with uh, without even enjoying any holidays or uh, Sunday rest. And also, pinapatulog sila sa kamalig and sometimes on the floor, on the ground. So, um, at the shipyard, uh, here are the uh, prominent products being forged that time. Kasi mostly shipbuilding. So yung products ng mga blacksmiths uh, noon is mostly related to shipbuilding like uh, mga pako, iron chains, spikes, uh, bolts, uh, spikes, keys, rings, uh, anything related to shipbuilding. So in 1778, there were about 22 Chinese smiths, 42 silversmiths, and two locksmiths admitted in the Philippines. And then some 19 of them found residencies in Cavite. 10 in Cavite Viejo, and the rest in other parts of Cavite. And then to support uh, the claim that there were uh, early blacksmiths in Cavite Cavite, uh, a famous blacksmith from Cavite Cavite was commissioned by local officers to do blacksmith work and make necessary armaments for rebellion purposes. Uh, a custom officer named Jose Martin uh, may pinagawa siya Kay Pando, the Pando is the blacksmith of Kawit Cav or Kawit Cavite, or known before as Cavite Viejo. So the bolos and daggers with which the prisoner were to be armed, and then the purpose of that rebellion was to assassinate all the Spaniards and behave their wives as well as their children and even the youngest ones. So yun uh, parang kinokomission yung local blacksmith to provide uh, bolos and daggers sa mga prisoners. So the town of Kawit emerged to be as one of the progressive industry of blacksmithing in the whole province, especially because uh, most of the streets, uh, like Kanto, Bridges, ay pinapangalan sa mga panday na din. Like for example, Juan Panday, uh, Manuel Panday, and Junishua Panday, Cavesan Panday, and uh, the rest. So in the years of 1882 and 1883, Kawit has a total of 25 uh, known blacksmiths or Hereros. As you can see here, here are some of the blacksmiths. Now here.
So now let's move on to blacksmithing industry in Kawit Kabite from 1898 to 1950. Um, there were blacksmiths supplied most of the provincial needs for metal tools in order to make other industries easier to operate. So uh, there were different modes of selling this usually uh, blacksmith received personal orders from customers. Uh, yeah, from customers and uh, mostly uh, yung customers nila, fishermen, farmers, and the townspeople. Usually, uh, it takes around two days to three days to uh, do certain uh, products. So medyo matrabaho din. And then they also earned revenues from trading in Tiangge or markets. In the 1880s, uh, periodic market days was a tradition in most towns of Cavite. Like for example, uh, Kawit is uh, scheduled uh, on Mondays, every Mondays, uh, sa Changge. And then Bakuor on Tuesday, Imus on Wednesday, and etc. It lasted a uh, full day or like for some uh, mornings lang or afternoon. And lastly, they also sell through commission-based system and wholesale vendors. And this kind of business opportunity was undertaken by General Aguinaldo himself as he tried to sell blacksmith products which he got from Kawit to areas around Bindoro at a very young age. So sabi niya, um, Nilakbay namin at pinasadya, hindi lamang ang mga pulo sa Mindoro, Marinduque, Islas de Tablas at Masbate, kundi pati na ng Kapis, Panay at iba pang mga pulo. Sa paroroon ay nagdala kami ng sari-saring kalakal na mapagkakakitaan gaya ng asin at gulok na gawa sa kawit at iba pa. So, uh, Aguinaldo and his brother Chris Pulo, a uh, road up Arau, or a native of Trigger, which they named San Bartolome. It was used mostly for their uh, inter-island trading from Cavite Viejo to provinces like Mindoro, Ramblon, Masbate, and Panay. So uh, blacksmith products were also sold during fiestas or town festivals. Like for example, uh, fiestas here in Kawit is uh, every July 20th. 20 second. And then let's move now to the roles of blacksmiths in uh, Kawit Cavite during the revolution. So a prominent blacksmith of Aguinaldo who was recorded to have produced many weapons uh, for the Katiponeros was uh, Jose Ignacio Pawa. As you can see in the picture, he cheaply administered the melting of brass from uh, church bells and converted them into finished lantakas and other weapons in the foundry, especially when the uh, Magdalo headquarters transferred to Imus from Ka Cavite Viejo or Kawit. Uh, the most prominent weapon being produced during these times were daggers and bolos. Kasi, syempre, uh, lapit na yung revolution, so kailangan nilang mag-amass uh, ng arms and uh, weapons. So as you can see on the, here, Aguinaldo's memoirs also provide insights on the various weapons used by the Katiporneros. When they took uh, a tribunal in Kawit, they were only armed with large knives, uh, gulok, and also daggers or balarao. He may have made reference to itak, which they which were produced in Cavite El Viejo uh, since blacksmithing became an industry in the said town in the 1890s. He even referred to his man as bolomen, kasi lagi silang may hawak ng mga bolo. Sa waste nila. So uh, on November 21 also, 1896, an order circulate, circulated for the recruitment of Bolo men to join the revolution. So um, President Valdomero Aqui, uh, Aguinaldo issued circulars requiring uh, able-bodied uh, male to be equipped with bow and arrow aside from uh, the bolos uh, at their waist. Ganun ka importante yung bolos and uh, daggers during that time. Kaya ganun din ka importante yung mga panday during that time. And during the peak of the revolution in Kawit Cavite, uh, it was believed that there were a total of 45 blacksmith shops existing during 
uh, that time. And these blacksmith shops were responsible for making the first 2,000 bolos and daggers used by the revolutionaries in the early stage of the revolution. So there is this uh, tula na often recited by Miss Christina Aguinaldo Suntay, uh, Aguinaldo's daughter. So it is uh, medyo mahaba siya, pero kinat ko na lang to emphasize the presence of blacksmiths in Kaingin. Uh, it's a barangay in Kawit Cavite, kung saan dito, uh, dito madaming panday during that time, and also up until now. So Kawit Cavite, doon sa may gahak, doon pinupugutan ang mga kalabang nahuhuling buhay. Sa may tabo naman ay iba yung daan, sila ay inililibing at tinatabunan. Sa, mga ka, sa, sa may kaingin, doon pinapanday, uh, gamit na kalasang nayaring kababayan, Apoy sa dibdib, pag-ibig sa bayan, pinaghalong buo nitong himagsikan. So as you can see here in the, uh, sa tula, uh, masyadong in-emphasize na sa kaingin talaga pinapanday yung mga gamit sa revolution. Here is the map. So as you can see here in the map, uh, here is again all the shrine. And itong uh, place na to, ito yung kaingin, kawit kabite. So... And dito yung three present uh, three present blacksmiths and eto yung uh, HB blacksmith shop yung founded nung 1898. So based on cultural mapping made by Fundacion Santiago, the HB blacksmith is one of the several or original blacksmiths in Kaingin Kawit Cavite. It was believed to have established in 1898 by the family. Uh, it was started by Buenaventura Jimenez, uh, the first generation blacksmith who provided Aguinaldo and his men with bladed weapons. So here's the picture of the HB blacksmith shop while doing the blacksmith work. And here is a uh, major. Uh, nakita ko siya during that time na nagi interview ako sa bahay uh, ng HB uh, master blacksmith. So, uh, na-curious ako tapos tinanong ko kung anong, kung anong ibig sabihin kasi baka painting lang nung kung ano-ano. Yun pala, ito ay painting nila uh, ng family business nila. So, this portrait symbolizes the strong blacksmith tradition of the family and blacksmithing binds the family into a communal ideology of preserving the indigenous knowledge by means of uh, teaching the succeeding generation. So, as what you can see here in the painting, the maestro, Benedicto Bales, uh, him, did the forging of the heated metal we discussed in Elmer Valles. And then the other one, uh, Lito Bales, doing the process of sharpening, while Benedicto Bales Jr., the one here seated, is doing the handles. So this uh, uh, Benedicto Bales Jr. here is the one uh, managing the business now of HB Blacksmith Shop. And then here is also another blacksmith from Kawit Cavite uh, that produces weapons uh, during the Spanish Revolution and also uh, Filipino American. Uh, his name is uh, Carino Victa. He was able to manufacture a total of 4,000 bolos from a huge smelter that Aguinaldo asked him to assemble. It is printed in Kasaysayan. Uh, Uh, the Kawitenyos blacksmith, uh, being the blacksmiths of the uh, Philippine Revolutionary Army, um, has, been has been recognized as an important help in the attainment of independence in 1898. So during the Filipino-American War, uh, prod production of products continued. And uh, on February 4, 1899, an eyewitness account by Richard Sh Sh Sheridan said that Filipinos were sharpening their bolos and asking if he could purchase it for himself. And the Filipinos said, I fear we shall need them all. So ganun ka important yung demand for bolos that time. Uh, however, after the war, uh, the means for uh, military production as one of the role of blacksmithing in Kawit was gradually losing its, its demand and the craft of metalworking 
uh, was slowly being absorbed as an established local industry. So the demand for uh, producing bolos for the war was uh, getting low. So uh, the blacksmiths uh, turned into producing them as a local industry to support the agriculture and the household industries then. And uh, one of the, uh, during this time, uh, during this time, during the American period, uh, one of the strategic plans implemented by the Americans was to revive the Philippine economy after the war and immediately address the issue of industrial education. So they introduces industrial education to Filipinos and one of the industries being taught was blacksmithing. Uh, the blacksmithing course they offered in trade schools was uh, four years in length. Those students took advantage of it getting employed on their fourth year. So uh, as you can see on the quote, uh, the shop is 110 feet by 36 feet wide. It is equipped with 10 concrete forges made by pupils themselves. Uh, the, the blast is furnished into fires by a blower operated by steam power. So uh, as you can see, the trade schools introduced technology to the traditional blacksmithing practice. They also added a uh, steam hammer, hand drill, and etc. So, ganun na uh, ka modern yung inintroduced na way of blacksmithing during that time. And consequently, uh, those first batches of students who graduated put up their own workshops and employed themselves in, or employed themselves in big and small industries as blacksmiths after graduation. And then according to reports uh, on households in 1918, the town of Kawit has recorded also a total of 26 blacksmith shops. And then average months is around five months kasi nga uh, may resting period sila during uh, the, plan, uh, the harvesting season. And the number of workers, 78 total. Total wages per month, 2,700. And then total wage per worker per month is around 35 pesos. The amount of wage for a blacksmith have had several changes throughout the years in American uh, occupation. So for other provinces, the rate is 1.63 per day. For Cavite, uh, it is 2.07 per day. So it is clearly a profitable business uh, during these years, uh, which was why many people became uh, enthusiastic about the profession and even put up shops for a living. So in a typical shop uh, before, in the American period, 100 pieces of bolos would cost around 20.50 cents, 20 pesos and 50 cents for the labor and then 50 pesos for the raw materials needed in iron and coal. So um, in 100 pieces ball of production, a blacksmith could earn uh, 30 pesos a day just for the bolos. And the blacksmith products were uh, also made in pre-order basis. Sometimes uh, may mga nagko-commission and then binibenta sa Manila for a much larger, larger markup price. So the products were also sold in Manila, Cavite, Laguna, and some towns in Tayabas and Bataan also. During the Japanese occupation, uh, the lack of employment and the scarcity of goods caused enormous growth of uh, informal trading activities. People sorted into buying and selling of goods. Many small businesses were closed. And the uh, blacksmith shops were also uh, getting low demands for their works. So, medyo bumababa din yung uh, income. But interesting, interestingly, a connection with the present HB blacksmith shop and the guerrilla units in Kawit was established. So, nagulat ako nung nakita ko yung uh, information na ito. Uh, Corporal Alberto B. Jimenez uh, founded the Tagapagtanggol ng Inang Bayan or Tanib, or the defender of the motherland. So uh, the Japanese, on, sorry, on the night of November 1, 1942, uh, the three soldiers met in the house of Captain Dairit near the Catholic cemetery of Kawit Cavite, where, uh, where they decided to form the Tanib 
However, the Japanese police learned of the establishment of the Tanev uh, because of the spice. So the Japanese then raided the house in Kaing and Kawit Kabite where Jimenez was staying. Uh, it was uh, the present HB blacksmith shop where the balises reside. And the Japanese police did not fa uh, find uh, Jimenez there. So they arrested instead his uncle named Bedaventura Jimenez, his brother Emiliano Jimenez, and his cousin-in-law, Honorato Balas. But they were uh, freed uh, years after that. So the industry of blacksmithing in Kawit Kabiti can be assumed to be untouched from the Japanese uh, influences. Uh, although there might be um, issues when it comes to acquisition of metals since at the crucial time of war, most of the metals were being used by them for military purposes. And then the growing anti-Japanese sentiments also may have had encouraged the blacksmiths in secret manufacturing of weapons uh, like bolos for Kawitenos while still operating as a normal business. Like for this kind of uh, guerrilla rebellion. Let's move on to the contemporary blacksmithing industry in Kawit Kabite. Uh, this time from 1950 to 1985. So uh, after the war, some blacksmith shops emerged to be as new to the industries like the JKK and the end blacksmiths. So it was established in 1950. These uh, are the two of the existing blacksmith shops in the town, which laid the foundation of the um, contemporary blacksmithing practices in Kawit Kabite. Here are the pictures of uh, the present and uh, the present uh, blacksmiths, si Miss Hermania Santulan, hindi po siya panday. Asawa po siya nung founder ng panday. And um, siya lang po yung nagmamanage while uh, Kuya Saldi, yung headmaster. Here is Mr. Bales of HB Blacksmith. Siya yung kaninang nakaupo sa painting. And then Mr. Gomez of the JKK Blacksmith. And here is the proximity of their shops. Uh, to Aguinaldo's house. Dati, uh, during, that, uh, during the revolution, mostly magkakatabi yan para mas mabilis yung transfer of bolas and daggers. So, according to Nilo Gomez, the, uh, the blacksmiths of uh, JKK, uh, he remembered that blacksmith shops were evident in Kawit and it was one of the profitable local businesses in the town. Uh, Community-based industries or cottage industries, as defined uh, by Nasida, is production of goods, mainly in the house or in other places. And um, in a home industry, usually the father acts as a manager which other members of family serving as workers. And... Uh, here, uh, with the destruction from the war, uh, local industries found it hard to rebuild again. So the government created uh, programs and ways on how to boost the local economy for these community-based industries, like the blacksmith shops. So uh, there are import substitution introduced to help these local industries that aim to decrease imports by increasing domestic industrial uh, production. There were also efforts to set up uh, institutions like the NACIDA, uh, the National Cottage Industries Development Authority, and uh, the Cottage Industry Development Enterprises, uh, Raw Materials Corporation, and the Bureau of Small and uh, Medium Business Development. So these government initiatives safeguarded the community-based industries with insured finances from banks and cheap prices of raw materials. In the and in the 1960s, so yun, uh, medyo lum, tumaas, lum, lumakas na yung industry and the province of Cavite was characterized by a multi-sectoral economy and a rapid sectoral shift from uh, mainly agricultural to industrial uh, scale. So as you can see here, uh, the metal craft uh, 
needs only 175,000 for its capitalization and only requires for uh, two number of workers. And uh, here uh, they work from five days a week, from Monday to Friday, sometimes even Saturdays. And uh, according to Nilo Gomez, uh, dati nung araw, ang matatanda nung araw ay gumigisig ng alas 5 ng umaga, matatapos sila ng mga alas 2. Gusto nila maaga pero ang nangyayari nila, uh, mga 30 or peraso na. Gawa lang yun, hindi pa yun finished product. So, yeah. Um, here, uh, there are also different ways on how they sell their products. Uh, blacksmiths were doing work on a per-batch basis. Some go to the shops because they want to have their products repaired or customized. But in a general practice, um, blacksmiths normally start production when a middleman or distributor places an order and gives cash in advance for the needed raw materials. So it also creates um, um, in industrial linkages towards the other industries uh, related to materials and end products. So as you can see here in the picture, uh, it creates back backward linkages backward linkages and for forward linkages. Uh, so for backward linkages, blacksmith industry is getting raw materials from the recycling industry, such as scrap and junk shops, charcoal industry for wood charcoal, lumber industry for, for the wooden handles, and then forward linkages for middlemen who sell their products to other uh, end users for retail stores also, and other local con consumers such as farmers, uh, fishers, and etc. Here is the interesting part, kasi may existing uh, parang a list pa sila ng products. Uh, this is uh, uh, from the end locksmith, named after its Nicanor Santulan founder. Uh, it's retained tradition of doing work and most of its products before are still being sold. And uh, one of the notable insights here uh, is that the symbol N is being curved in the blade. So it, uh, the engraving or the emblem in their product simply shows uh, where the product came from. It also demonstrates uh, that they trademark as a business or also as a guide for customers if ever they have problems in terms of their uh, products. So for the channel distribution naman, uh, uh, mostly yung customers nila, uh, binibigay yung products sa uh, market vendors, wholesale vendors in Manila, and then binibigay din minsan sa uh, end users. So yun. Tapos yung iba, sila na nag... Uh, we call this uh, nag -de distribute sa uh, other customers. For the products and uh, wholesale and retail prices, here is the list. It is just uh, some of them, some of the products, kasi masyado ding madami. So it's ranging from uh, 400 to 700 pesos. Well, mas mura pag wholesale price. Oh, so the present products varies in prices because the product can be customized according to customer's preference in terms of sizes. So pwede kang magpagawa ng customized uh, blade pero in a much higher prices. Uh, here is the income uh, calculation I made for their business. Uh, uh, although the blacksmiths are guaranteed of an income, it is the wholesaler who controls the selling prices to the customers. So yeah, uh, mas malaki pa rin yung kita ng mga wholesalers sa kaya mga nagko-commission kasi mas mataas yung markup price na binibenta nila sa market sa other customers. But based on the data presented, uh, the annual net income for their blacksmith shops are computed as follows. For the average unit price, uh, it is 500. So you can see on the table on the previous slide. And then the product output per day is uh, seven. So assuming that there, uh, there are 35 finished products in one week, so less cost natin. So yung cost lang, uh, 
our salaries and utility costs. For salary, uh, it's Kuya Waldi. Uh, 400 yung binibigay na salary sa kanya. And then yung other two apprentices, uh, which is 200 per person, so that's 400. So that's a total of 800. And then material utility cost is only 700, so total of 1,500. And then less natin yun, uh, only 2,000 yung net income nila per day. Pwede na rin, and uh, uh, medyo mataas na din for a blacksmith shop. And they are not taxable kasi a reason nila is uh, it is not uh, stable. The income is not stable for their shops, kaya hindi na sila tinataksa ng uh, local government. And from the interview with the three remaining blacksmith shops, they all agreed that the noble job like blacksmithing can give a family a better life, better education, and better livelihood. Uh, according to them, uh, sa pamamagitan nga ng pagpapanday, according to Hermanya Santulan, sorry, sa pamamagitan nga ng pagpapanday, kahit maliit lang ang kita, na pag aral ang kanilang mga anak, wala silang naiipon, pero lahat ng mga anak ng panday nakakatapos. Kung gusto mong makapag aral kahit sa pamamagitan ng panday, kahit anong kurso, uh, pwede mong kunin. And here are the notable uh, beliefs or traditions in the blacksmith shop. So uh, the safety first principle has always been part of the tradition inside the blacksmith shop, wherein if one of uh, the members gets into an accident while working, the other, I mean, the whole blacksmith work could stop. So sabi nga ni Nilo Gomez, uh, pagka kami medyo naumpisaan nung may naaksidente, natigil na kami. Hindi mo masasabi, minsan yung sipit, maluwag ang kapit. Yun. Uh, and also, an evident observation that applies to the blacksmith industry is the concept of family worker. Being a backyard industry, almost all the blacksmith shops are family-owned business. And uh, continuation, in relation to the values of family welfare, the concept of getting along or pakikisama is also apparent since um, since they employ workers outside uh, their family circle. Aside from these beliefs, uh, the tradition of hereditary lineage was also practiced by the blacksmith. It was such a great privilege for a family to have a blacksmith for their, uh, or he would carry the honor of their family. But as for the family of Valles, uh, his generation would not allow non-members of the family to know, um, to know and be expert in the business. So according to him, uh, hindi naman sa pag-aano, pero kailangan kapamilya talaga. Kasi kapag natuto na, yung tinuturuan na iba, sa bagay, pwede naman, uh, pero wag mo, pero wag mo ipapakita yung sekreto nyo na paggagawa. Ah, Oops. Uh, yeah, paggagawa. So for Balis, uh, his ideals uh, is to uh, continue the practice only for uh, his family members. Pero pwede naman mag-hire ng, um, mag ng other uh, outside family members, pero until yung sa pagpupok lang, and that stuff. Now let's move on to summary and conclusion. Um, blacksmith industry as a trade, trademark of Kawit Kabite. So the blacksmith industry brought prosperity to Cavites from a pre-colonial period until today's supplying industry, supplying products in the agricultural, fishing, and household needs, and even the war. And the blacksmith industry also helps other industries with its raw material inputs and forward industry linkages. And uh, the indigenous knowledge gotten from early trading became more and more advanced with the introduction of new equipment and technology. Products were also adapting from time to time based on the needs of the town. And then after the war, blacksmiths continued to prosper their business while the help of the government and the scene also as one of the trademarks industries of the town.
So let's move on to the problems uh, that the blacksmithing industry is facing uh, nowadays. So as the years went by, the blacksmithing tradition has been gradually changing due to the modernization in terms of tools and equipment. Um, for example, uh, like the, tri the traditional grinding uh, is now using a side grinder powered by an electric motor. And another innovation uh, when it comes to equipment is the air pump used in the firing of the furnace. So they are now using a blower that was also powered by electric motor. Uh, another modernization with, in terms of equipment is the metal cutter for cutting metal manually. In, uh, since the old-fashioned way is, yeah, kinakat yung metal manually by forging and hammering it by hand. So ngayon, kinakat na siya using uh, an equipment. And then another problem is uh, an influx of imported iron implements from other countries kasi masyado na ding dumadami yung imported uh, iron implements. So medyo tumataas yung competition. Most of the lands in Cavites are also being converted into residential and commercial spaces. Kaya kumukunti din yung demand for um, ag agricultural uh, iron implements na for agricultural uh, means. Kasi uh, most ng mga lands here in Cavite are being converted into subdivisions and commercial spaces. And then, uh, pinaka-importante and, and serious issue uh, for the industry is the question of succession. Kasi um, uh, most ng mga family members and even the non-family members are not wanting to continue the job kasi uh, medyo matrabaho din and nakakapagod. And uh, syempre yung mga anak ng mga panday nakapag-aral na. So mas gusto nila na uh, a more uh, advanced uh, profession. So yun din yung problem ng industry. So uh, for blacksmithing industry as a part of town's cultural heritage, um, the blacksmith industry has been one of the pride livelihoods in the town. And it's one of the reasons why it needs to be in the list of the OTOP, Philippines by Department of Industry. As you can see here, uh, there is also a heritage tour organized uh, by Fundacion Santiago and Tabiti El Vejo. Uh, Heritage Tourism Association. So here are the pictures of the tours. So it is uh, um, in Blacksmith. It was si Kuya Waldi uh, there. Tapos for the government support, um, for the government support, uh, the Republic Act Number no. 7160, known as the Local Government Code of 1991, was meant to transform local uh, government units into self-reliant communities and active partners in nation building by giving them more powers, authorities, responsibility, and resources. And then the other one is the Auto Program of DTI, uh, in order to promote entrepreneurship and create more jobs in rural areas. Uh, Auto Program of DTI is um is like a one town one product uh, campaign of the DTI we're in kasi uh since famous ang Cavite ang Kawit Cavite for this in this industry like this uh it is better na may include sila dito sa program na to and also a shared service facility project to improve the competitiveness of MSMEs by providing them with machinery equipment tools systems skills and knowledge under a shared system and my suggestions for Kawit LGUs, as indicated uh, in my thesis, they could also partner up with online stores to showcase the local blacksmith products and also uh, offer them spaces in Tiangge or town markets like bazaars and festivals in Cavite. That's it. In, in. Okay. Uh... Maraming salamat, ginoong Andrew Nicole Miranda sa pagbabahagi ng inyong panayam. Gaya po ng unang binanggit ni Dr. Arlie de la Cruz, uh, ang kanyang pag-aaral ay ginawaran ng Best Thesis Award ng Departamento. Ngayon naman ay dadako tayo sa malayang talakayan 
para sa inyong mga katanungan, pwede po kayo mag-comment sa FP page ng DLSU Department of History. Pabasahin ko po ang ating comment section na binabantayan ni Ginoong Miguel Casabas at Ginoong Benji Diestro. So, uh, Ginoong Miranda, meron po tayong isang tanong mula sa mga nagko-comment at nanonood sa ating broadcast ngayong umaga. Uh, how much are you aware in your studies? How much were the expenses in getting the supplies needed in forging and the quality to be sold uh, by these uh, pandais? Mm, um, yes, uh, I, I included them in the presentation earlier. Uh, cause, oh, just that's just for American period. Um, for, for nowadays, uh, mostly um, ang income nila for, uh, like for example, uh, 500 peso uh, bolo, uh, they said in the interview that it's around um, 150 or 100 per piece. Mm -hmm. um, and another question is, uh, well, in the light of social movement, because you mentioned that uh, this topic doesn't only touch our economic history, but also touches uh, our local industry and our cultural heritage. Um, one of the questions that were given here was, in light of the social movements, uh, like Bacolor Room, Santa Iglesia, the Guardia de Honor, which were prolific during the 19th century, and uh, towards the end of the revolutionary period, um, were there any cases of anting and things being constructed by the Cavita blacksmith? Uh, yeah, actually there uh, there were, uh, kasi uh, mostly hindi lang naman uh, bolos and uh, blades yung pinapanday nila. Uh, barami din sa pandays ng uh, kawit, especially uh, yung gumagawa kasi ng mga anting anting is situated in a veleta. Cavite, so um, yung anting-anting talaga is sikat sa noveleta, pero in Kawit Cavite, mostly ang focus lang nila is purely bolos and uh, blades, mm -hmm. ganyan. And so, kung kahanapin natin yung anting-anting, it's uh, in noveleta, Cavite. Just adjacent sa Kawit lang naman. Uh, would you be aware if uh, these have been there since the 19th century or was it something purely conceived mga around the 20th century or so? Uh, no, uh, I think uh, it's it's as old as this kind of industry. Kasi uh, during uh, the Spanish time, uh, there are there were uh, tulisanes, yung mga nag nag banditry na nag raid also sa mga towns to towns. They they're using um, this an amulets or anything and thing para and they believing na it's uh their luck charm okay okay um maybe we can have our two last questions um uh, somebody asked is there a unique style for filipino made work aside from trademark stamping or a way to identify specifically if an item is made by a kawit blacksmith um, yung mga gawa ngayon, uh, napapansin ko, yun nga, aside from stamp, uh, medyo generic na yung blades nila. Uh, pero ang napansin ko during, uh, during before pa, uh, may mga ginagawa yung blacksmiths na customize. Like, for example, like, if ever nagagawa yung isang blacksmith for blade na parang pinagawa ni Aguinaldo, ganyan, pinagawa ng isang uh, elite commander from Katipunan, ganyan. Uh, gagawin yun ng isang blacksmith or panday. Tapos, may, di ko include sa presentation eh, pero uh, yung handle niya, parang may kamay na fist na nakaganyan. Yun yung design ng pommel. And which signifies uh, na for um, higher position yung blade na yun. Okay, okay. Uh, at ang huling tanong, uh, May I ask if you have any knowledge regarding the difference and similarities of blacksmithing between West or Europe and in Cavite? Um, 
with regards to West and Europe, uh, I don't have because uh, mostly I'm focus ko lang ang naging focus ko lang during uh, my thesis as uh, sa Kawit Kabite and other uh, research studies na nagawa ko is Southeast Asian uh, uh, blacksmithing practices. Uh, huling tanong na lang. Aside from the uh, handle, uh, meron bang mga style book na ginagamit ang mga panday? Style book? Sorry? O parang uh, template ba? Para uh, may uh, parang parang ipapakita nila, para mapakita nila yung uh, produkto nila? Ah, yun, yeah, kanina napakita ko siya. Uh, yung parang list, yung style, nandun na yung form, nandun na yung kung para saan siya gagawin. And mostly kasi yung mga panday sa kawit, alam na nila kung anong use ng uh, certain product. So like for example, ito, uh, itak, pwedeng pang, pang tabas ng puno, ganyan. Pwedeng pang gamit sa bahay, ganyan. Alam na din nila yung length and uh, ganun yung ek- ganun sila ka-expert. Opo. Um, para po sa mga uh, mag-aaral pa tungkol dito sa kaysay ng pandayan sa uh, uh, Hawit Cavite o kahit Cavite lamang uh, o sa mga peripheries ng Cavite, ano pa ang mga magagandang sources, mga uh, batis na pwede nang gamitin? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, sources, uh, kasi yung study ko, um, medyo mahaba nga eh, diba? So, gumamit ako ng archival sources din. And also, pinaka-importante talaga is oral, oral history. Kasi mm-hmm. merong mga information na hindi mo matatagpuan sa books or sa archives. And uh, mostly yung mga ganong information is only, mo malalaman only sa through oral history, through oral uh, interview, or uh, being there in the, being uh, physically present in their shops para malaman mo mismo kung ano yung actual history ng shop na yun. Okay po. Kasi it's an uh, industry or community-based industry. Okay po. Meron uh, pa po bang mga ibang tanong? Pwede po kayo mag-comment dito sa comment section ng uh, De La Salle University Department of History. Uh, isa pang uh, pandag, pandagdag lamang, uh, napag-usapan niyo po yung mga seasonal contractual workers na tuwing uh, uh, harvest season sa kawit ay hindi nagpapanday mga panday. So, may, uh, pumupunta ba sila sa ibang trabaho? Uh, uh, nagpapahinga ba sila o meron pa ba silang ibang ginagawa? higit dito. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, during that time, ang sinabi lang sa akin nung na-interview ko, uh, parang minsan farmer din sila, yung mga panday. So, pag harvest ng season, tigil yung work nila. So, nag-harvest sila ng uh, mga ani. And then yung other, na hindi naman farmers, uh, they just uh, stay at home or do other works. Kasi konti lang yung demand during that time. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Andrew Nicole Miranda. Uh, ngayon naman po ay dadako tayo. Uh, salamat sa lahat ng nakilakok, malayang talakayan. Narito naman po ang aming profesor na si Ginoong Michael Charleston B. Chua sa kursong Public History upang magbigay ng pangwakas na pananalita. Sir Shaw? Makasaysayang uh, ha- Uh, hapon na ba? Hapon sa ating lahat mga kaibigan. So muli pinapasalamatan ko si Ginong Andrew uh, Nicole sa kanyang uh, presentasyon ukol sa panday sa Pilipinas. Alam ko na marami tayong natutunan kasi bagamat kilala natin si Fernando Po Jr. No? ay uh, tila yung pagpapanday mismo, eh, hindi na natin nare-realize sa buhay natin. Medyo naging absent na sila sa kasaysayan, no? absent na sila sa ating kamalayan. Pero ang nakakatuwa dyan, mga kaibigan, tandaan niyong mabuti, na sa lipunang Pilipino, sabi ni Sius Salazar, may tatlong mahalagang papel o trabaho sa ating uh, lipunan. Yung una po ay yung uh, 
dato. Yung pangalawa ay yung babaylan, spiritual leader. Yung pangatlo ay yung panday. O yung craftsman. Oh? So, yung tatlong yon ang bumubuo sa sinaunang lipo ng Pilipino. Kaya marami yung salamat at uh, binigyang uh, saysay ninyo yung ganyang uh, 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 papel sa lipunan. Ganun din mga kaibigan, ako yung nagpapasalamat sa suporta na ibinigay sa atin ng ating tagapangulo, Dr. Maria Florina Aurelio Swan, ah, at, na, at lahat ng kaguruan ah, ng ah, DLSU Departamento ng Kasaysayan. Kasi sa suporta na binigay nyo sa mga pagpapapunta sa estudyante, sa, dito sa napakahalagang unang-unang-una na webinar mismo, standalone ng Departamento ng Kasaysayan ng DLSU. At syempre, lagi nakasuporta sa atin yung ating faculty, nandyan din yung ating search, yung search ang nagbigay sa Lasal History Department ng pagkakataon para mapasama sa webinar. Pero ito po yung ating pinaka-una uh, na standalone. Siyempre, kasama natin dyan ang Sociedad de Historia o na, uh, na pinamumunuan ni Ginoong Mark Abeliang. Salamat dahil nagawa natin ito, nakaraos tayo. Salamat, uh, Mark Kevin, sa binigay ninyong uh, suporta sa atin, sa atin at ng, uh, ng ating student organization. Okay. Salamat din sa aking klase sa HISTPUB o Public History. Ito po isang bagong minor ng Departamento ng Kasaysayan ng De La Salle University. O, kaya, bakit po? Gan bakit po ganun? So, yung klase ko po na kasama si Naginong Abelian ng Sosyedad at yung mga iba pa nating kasama sa HISTPUB, o, uh, nakakatuwa kasi ito pong Department of History, seryoso po kami at may vision po ang ating tagapangulo na si Dr. Maria Florina Aurelius I na magkaroon ng isang uh, vision ng department na tayo ay isa sa mga manguuna sa pagtuturo ng isang larang na bagamat hindi masyadong napagtutunan ng pansin sa matagal na panahon ay kitang-kita naman natin na napakarami na pong uses ngayon. At ito nga po yung public history at social history. Oh, so nandiyan po ay eh, ating yung yan, yan si Luis Foronda nakikita ninyo, yung lolo po ni Luis Foronda na kasama natin ngayon sa Sociedad de Historia ay sikat na sikat po yan na oral historian at ang pangalan po niya ay Marcelino Foronda. So si Marcelino Foronda po, siya ang nag-establish ng departamento bilang isang oral history uh, pra uh, practicing department na yan po ay vision din natin na maibalik. So Oral history, social history, no, dahil meron tayong ileto, lecture series, ah, at syempre yung public history. Dahil ang marami sa mga nasa departamento ng kasaysayan ay nagpa-practice ng public historian o public history in one way or another. At mga public historians po sila with training. Kaya po, ako ay nagpapasalamat na ito yung mga isa sa mga gawain na uh, pinapa, pinapalaganap natin upang masimulan na yung binhi ng vision na ito para sa ating departamento. Okay? So, ang mga estudyante ng Lasal, maraming salamat sa inyong panunood. At ako ay natutuwa na yun, dahil at, at, tandaan natin na yung public history kasi, kaya tinulungan tayo ng sosyedad sa ng mga estudyante ko. Dahil sabi ni Ma'am Rina, tandaan natin na lahat ng ito ay public history. Yung ginagawa nyo ngayon na bagong normal, yung webinars, itong training para sa ganito ay bahagi ng public history. So yung pag-aayos ng programa, yung pagkakaroon ng mga uh, speakers, pag-iimbita ng akmang speakers, lahat po ang training na yan ay kailangan nyo po for public history. Pati ang pagbubuo uh, ng mga organisasyon at pagsapi sa mga kapisanang pangkasaysayan ay public history. Kaya... Napakaganda na nagkaroon ng training din tayo at natutuwa ako na nakaraos tayo sa una nating training. Congratulations sa mga estudyante ko sa Public History at sa Sociedad de Historia. Pero meron pa tayong dalawa at sana masamahan pa ho tayo ng ating mga estudyante. At tandaan nyo, kami kayong mga estudyante namin, ang mga guru nyo ay magbibigay ng incentive sa inyo sa inyong panonood ng mga susunod pa na ating mga training. Uh, oy Sir Joey, salamat po at uh, nanood din kayo. At pinapasalamat ako lahat ng bahagi ng Departamento ng Kasaysayan. Pasensya ka na, hindi na kayo mababanggit lahat. Siyempre, special si Sir Joey. 
di ba? At saka si, <laughs> si Fernie, thank you sa pagsagot sa sa ating mga katanungan, si Sir Vic, si Sir Lars, lahat, sorry, no? Thank you, Sir Fernie, salamat po. Uh, alam ko marami sa ating mga kaguruan ay nanonood din sa atin. Pasensya na kayo, hindi ko kayo mababanggit lahat. So, Andrew, salamat at uh, congratulations sa mga achievements mo. Proud po ang departamento sa inyong nakarating. Okay? So, thank you so much. You want to add something? Uh, gusto ko lang po magpasalamat sa department and sa Social Day Day Story. Salamat, Andrew. Salamat po. Oh. Okay. okay po. Maraming salamat po, Ginoong Shao Chua, uh, sa inyong imbitasyon para sa ating mga manonood at mga estudyante ng De La Salle University at sa mga estudyante uh, na gusto pang kumuha ng Batsilier sa Sining uh, sa Kasaysayan. Maraming salamat po sa ating tagapanayam, ginoong Andrew Nicole G- uh, Miranda sa DLSU Departamento ng Kasaysayan, kay Dr. Arley Ross D. De La Cruz at ang tagapangulo ng uh, Departamento na si uh, Dr. Maria Florina Aurelio Swan. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nakilahok sa aming programa ngayong araw Uh, muli, magandang hapon po. Kung hayan din po natin ang dalawa pang panay- panayam sa Setyembre 12 at Setyembre 19. Nasa poster po ang pamagat ng kanilang lektura. Dito na po magtatapos ang unang serye ng panayam. Uh, mabuhay ang kasaysayan at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Maraming salamat po. <music>